Okay, so we saw what PCA does, what, what PCA is, PCA is this, PCA is that. Okay, fine. Have you wondered that PCA is cool and all? Love what it really does, but how in the world does it recognize a face by doing whatever it does? Now, that was one question that I was really wondering about when I first read about PCA. I couldn't understand how in the world it actually recognizes a face. This is exactly that I'm going to be explaining in part two with focus on the algorithm that whatever it does it generates eigenfaces, it represents an image as a set of eigenfaces and this and that. How is it actually going to recognize a face? So let's move on. Now working principle of PC eigenface for face recognition. This is going to sound a bit repetitive, but I think you know it for warming up, warming you up before the uh, actual steps that will begin in a slide or two. Okay, given a training set of M images and an unknown face, all of the same size, the aim is to re represent a face image as a linear combination of a set of eigenvectors, eigenvectors or eigenfaces, like so, as we saw earlier. Now these eigenfaces or eigenvectors are in fact the principal component training set of face images of these face images for example generated after seeing the dimensionality of the training set we talked about this earlier that we reduce dimensionality to reduce the computational efforts needed to calculate significant eigenfaces now eigenfaces are selected each training set image is in terms of the eigenfaces and this was the weight vector that we talked about earlier, I explained. Unknown face comes for recognition. It is also represented in terms of the selected K eigenfaces. The eigenface representation, this eigenface representation of unknown face is compared with that of each train that of each training set face image. So I had talked earlier that each training each image in the training set was represented in, of in face representation, so it had a weight vector. So what we are going to do when a new face comes for recognition, we are going to convert, we are going to generate its weight vector, and then this weight vector will be compared with that of each of the image in the training set. I hope you get. It. And the distance between these representation, this representation, this eigenface representation or weight vector with them is calculated. The distance between the images not images is not calculated. I hope this point is clear because for the first time I was confused that what does it mean that you have to you know calculate the distance between the images so that's what it meant uh, after I started I ended up so I'm just telling you tip. now if the distance above a specified threshold take the unknown face as that person otherwise the default result would be unknown you get prerequisites of PC I can face now we have the recap part one, we saw some facts about PCA, how it works, all we then again repeated it just in the previous slides. So how does it fit in with the imitation of PC faces for face recognition? That is where this part comes in. That is the prerequisites. You will see that uh, whatever the facts were, what their implication is when you're actually trying to implement the algorithm itself. So we'll start with uh, one, that PC eigenfaces method considers each pixel in an image as a separate dimension. Remember we said that an image a, is an instance in a high dimensional space, high dimensional space which is actually a, a, a data set, a data set of faces containing faces. So, so an n by an image has n square pixels naturally, therefore n, for an image n by n will have n square dimensions. Now that whole lot. For example, a 50 by 50 image, it's a very small image. It will have 20 pixels. Therefore, it will have how many? 2500 dimensions. That's a whole lot. For recognition, we need a training set or a data set of face images. Now that we are at the definition that we need a data set containing of M images, right? So that's where this comes in. All face must be of that same size. That it, that is that is the implication of the point. That the dimensions must be same. That because it orthogonal transformation we had mentioned in the definition. I think said counting of total m images would be like this, and each image would be like no less. Than. So this is once again I have repeated it. For example, a 50 image, then each image would be of 25 pixels, therefore of 2500 dimensions. 
the PA eigen method does not work on images directly. It first converts them to matrix or vector form. We did say orthogonal, right? So orthogonal meaning the matrices naturally. So this is an image, for example, a photo of me and dimension. So what PCA will do is add it straight like this into a vector where we one will be both equal. Each of your pixels would be flattened into a column vector. Now these were the prerequisites or the implication of PCA's working that you needed to know before you into the algorithm steps which are coming up right into the in the next slide. So let's go.